started, I was going to ask you what it was originally that attracted you to getting involved in, in this movie. I knew the producer, Oliver David, uh, because my sister and I actually acted in a short film that he made. And Ben, the director of Private Chat, was the first assistant director on Oliver's short film. And I remember then him telling me he was working on a script like about the Private Chat. And then three or so years later, and I think I got an email from maybe Oliver saying, would you audition for this? And I read the script and it was a great role, I thought, and a very cool seeming project. And I, and I, Ben's films that he's made before this, I found interesting. So it seemed like a no brainer. <laughs> I mean, it's a great story. It reminded me a little of kind of the king of comedy. I like how the kind of, um, the sort of felt like the sort of blurring of the line between what is necessarily real and what's not, it might, what might be in his head. Uh, Cause there were some moments where I did think, did that happen? I mean, was that, do you remember that, that having that experience reading the script? Did you fully think, I mean, do you remember thinking maybe I don't trust everything that's, that's unnecessarily reading? I didn't have that feeling, but I think it's interesting you did. Um, and I can see why if, if I were to have watched the film knowing nothing about it and with this character and with what's happening I could see there is a quality of is this happening or is this is is this a fantasy coming true for him um, which I think is intentional mm. Yeah, well, I mean, it's fair to say, I mean, this is a, it is a brave performance in some regards. I mean, you do go to some places that some actors wouldn't. Were there any apprehensions getting involved in this project? And how much faith do you have to have in your filmmaker, in your director, when, when you do take on a role like this, that it's, it's going to be done, sort of uh, tackled, I suppose, in a delicate manner? I didn't have much trouble signing on to do this. Um which maybe I'm not sure what that says about me. I maybe need to work that out in therapy. Uh, maybe, maybe I'm, uh, it didn't, it never bothered me. And for some reason I felt, and I really have, I'm not sure exactly why, but I never didn't trust that Ben would do a good job with the movie. I, I really liked the sensibilities of his, of his previous films. I, I found them to be thoughtful and artful. So I, it, it didn't, and knowing Ben, meeting him, it just never occurred to me that the stuff would be dealt with in an indelicate way. So I was down. And as an actor, I am interested in me in, I'm interested in, in everything. I, I don't, I don't really want to put limits on, on myself for vain or, or political reasons. I don't mean polit, I mean political and like, uh, you know, I just don't have that. I don't, when I see actors take a risk, even in a movie that I'm like, that wasn't a great movie, but I, that that actor actually risked doing something that was embarrassing or, or was very um, huge in one way emotionally. I, I, and if they succeed, I'm always feel grateful that they did that. So that, that's why I, with that in mind, I just tend to say yes to challenging situations because that's why I'm doing this. Like that, that is why I've signed up to be an actor with my life. I don't, I'm not really interested in things. I'm way less interested in things that don't make me feel uh, a little scared of doing them or what, how will this be received? When I'm asking myself those questions, I feel like I'm actually in a space that I want to be in. And maybe actually the character is interesting enough to do. <laughs> um, but not asking myself those questions is when I know I'm doing something really easy, safe, and maybe even boring. <laughs> and you have to risk being humiliated to do anything good. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because I mean, obviously, it's an it's, it is an actor's job to forget the camera is there. That's like one of the the things they'll just teach you right from the offset when you sort of get into this career. But I'm just wondering because in your character, he kind of loses his dignity. I mean, that's part of the kind of dominatrix kind of culture is that the men surrender their dignity. They become pathetic in a kind of woman's presence, and you had to kind of do that on camera. But usually, men do it in the kind of comfort of their own secrecy or with in this kind of like. Um, 
contract they've made with the kind of person that they're kind of working alongside. But you had a kind of crew, uh, I guess, a camera crew kind of watching you. Was that quite difficult to completely block them out when your character was in many ways surrendering all of his kind of dignity in those scenes? Well, it was a small crew. Partly I have had enough experience at this point that I'm not spooked by the, the crew. And I think there's a analogy I could make, although I haven't unfortunately gotten a chance to be in a live in theater for a long time, but there's a, there is this emotional leap that you make almost unconsciously as a performer at a certain point where the audience, every audience almost becomes the same. So you're not dealing with individual, you're not, you know, it would be terrifying if it's like, okay, there's my, there, those are my friends. That's, 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 that's Grace. She's pulling focus. That's Alistair. He's doing sound. That's, you know, Luigi, he's the gaffer, you know, and then you're like, oh shit, these are my buddies. Like I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed. But when you're acting, any in the room you, you you allow yourself to see everyone is just the audience with the capital a and if you are doing your work you want to show bear all for the audience it's like yeah it would be it's hard when you tune into the individuals yes do i want to bear all for just my friends making this movie with me no but for the audience that is like in conversation with every audience that's ever existed and the 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 idea of people receiving work and hopefully being moved by it and and then being able to sort of consider their lives from a different vantage point that or whatever you know on down the list of positive things that could happen from doing something embarrassing in quotes in front of people you know then it suddenly becomes like a like a challenge that you want to rise to and not something that you want to shirk from yeah because that's what I was wondering. I mean, how important do you think it is that people can see a bit of themselves in Jack? Because I mean, I think obviously to he's kind of goes to some extremes, but there is a little bit of everyone, I think, in, in that character. Could you see some of yourself in, in, in the role? Yeah, I mean, I think, yes. I, I, I It's an actor's job to find themselves in every role, you know, you know even if you're playing jack in this movie or jack the ripper in another movie you know your job is to is to find the humanity and to identify that it really is the job but well, yeah with this character um even though he has he is a really is a flawed guy but he also is a romantic who's desperate for connection and i mean that's easy to relate to um, and I'm glad that you found him to be a character you related to. I found his um, enthusiasm for, for and his passion kind of infectious, you know, when he kind of really got into something. Yeah. Well, it's it's great that you said that because I, I do know, I will tell you that that bringing that enthusiasm out of me was one of Ben's um, sometimes challenges and some, <laughs> but always one of his but always his directive with the with the movie. It was very important for him that even though he was making a film about a uh, 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 just sort of uh, uh, on the face of it, a lonely, maybe slightly antisocial and guy that that what 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 he was underneath his his facade was a very enthusiastic, very boyishly excitable and like hungry for the experience of being a live guy even though he's stuck in front of his computer only talking to cam girls and his you know preoccupation and occupation is gambling which is a pretty that that as an obsession is 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 Well, actually, I, I'm going to retract that. I was going to, yeah. There's something about gambling that it's it's very it's it's very exciting, but it's also deadening. You know, it's it's like a lot of the things you find online. It's like as much as it is stimulating, it also creates like a huge vacuum of need, almost in a similar way to like scrolling Facebook or Instagram or you know Twitter. 
do you think there's almost like a kind of worrying amount out there for for people because I, I just think well what i mean by that is when i was kind of like 13 years old if i saw like a even just slight nudity on television i was like hello <laughs> but now if you're 13 you have the there's a lot available to kids of a certain age. And I know this film isn't necessarily delving into the dangers of it, but it does kind of touch upon the culture that people can kind of unwittingly get into on online. Yeah. From a male perspective, I mean, I think actually Julia's character has a lot of agency over what she does, but your character, Jack, it does show some of the kind of dangers. Do you, do you worry about the next generation? Because I think you're the sort of same age as me and we kind of grew up just after all that. But I mean, kids these days have got a lot available at their fingertips, maybe a worrying the amount so. Yeah, I also feel like we had, if we're the same age, I also think we had a, a maybe not as much and it wasn't, there, it wasn't as frictionless because we didn't have the phone in our pocket the whole time. But I remember feeling like the world of like online pornography, just for what it's worth was, you know, there was no innocence there. I mean, we could just, we could, it, it definitely has accelerated in recent years but i still think we we saw that and what is the result of that this is a question that i don't have an answer to at all and i do but i do think that part of what it might it will be a question that many will try to unpack and 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 understand and i think the movie is asking adjacent questions to yours is it providing answers? Not sure. Do I have an answer to that question? I really don't, but I will underline it as an interesting question. Yeah. And I was just wondering about collaborating with Julia on this, because she, I mean, obviously most of us became aware of her in Uncut Gems and she was brilliant in that and she's brilliant in this. And your performance with her, I mean, it's very, it's quite a raw performance. And you spend a lot of time, well, not a lot of time, but you spend some integral time together on screen. So I just wondered how it was to, to work so closely with her on this project. Julia is a unique performer. She is an actor who, without trying, can bring her full humanity to the screen. And it, it, I've, I've thought a lot about her and other actors on that with that ability to inhabit. And it really is hard to explain or understand it's either there or it isn't and in julia's case it is there one thousand percent so that makes the experience for me also fun and effortless because sh I, there was never a moment when i didn't believe julia was this person and so then that gives me such freedom to be the to be jack um and yeah, I mean, Julia is amazing. We were lucky to have her. I was lucky to work with her. Uh, so, so going back on what you just said, you obviously don't need to name names, but you were mentioning about obviously working with someone and when they're so believable, it, may, it means it makes it easier for you to believe your character. Have you been in a scene before with an actor where because you don't believe their performance, it then makes it quite hard to believe your, your own? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that is the challenge. That is, that is often the greatest challenge of acting. Um, because if you are, you know, and it does happen where you're working with someone who is allowing, say, their anxiety or their vanity or their on down the list of things that can get in the way of an actor's ease to get in the way of their performance. And then you essentially have to do double work to almost not only imagine your performance, but imagine their performance. But what's really fun is when you have an actor who, like Julia, and like many, all the actors in the movie, but in this case, Julia, because she is, I mean, she's such a powerful presence. But when you are working with someone of her level of talent and skill, your work becomes so much less. You know, th th those that's great because actually, I feel like I don't have to work. I can just be in the presence of the other and allow myself to be affected. And it's, it, that's when I think acting becomes truly special and not a job. It feels, um, that's, that's when you feel like you get to, because what we're going for as actors is to feel totally transported into another reality. So much so that we almost aren't even aware of where that, when or where that happened. 
And that I believe is the kind of work that shows up best on camera where you, as the audience member, aren't seeing actors do a version of what they rehearsed at home. Actually, the experience is had for the first time anew in front of the camera. And that those, the result of that, I believe, is what people are looking for, whether they know it or not, when they go to see a film. So yeah, just my sort of, I'm just running out of time. It's my sort of final question. I was wondering, because when you are shooting, uh, a lot of the scenes you do shoot with Julia are in front of the screen. Was she actually on the other end of a kind of webcam? Yeah. Or was that, yeah. yeah, the way they did it was we, the, the, the room that is her like dominatrix room was actually a set in the, in Ben's apartment where, where Jack's apartment was, was. And so I would be, the cameras were really, you know, the, the, the computers were really uh, connected with like uh, video chat and we just did it. Oh, nice. And she was in the other room, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was fun. Well, cool. But well, just actually, just before I go, I did have one last thing. I was just yeah, going to yeah, go for it. I just wondered if you're, um, have your parents seen this yet? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Thanks for asking it. Uh, no. And, you know, my parents really are supportive parents. Um, and they want to see everything that I do. But I've urged them to never see this. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. They are complying. Oh, that's nice. I think I, 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 I think I do the same. Are going to agree with me that this is one they will sit out. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Just read the positive mentions if they come in. <laughs> <laughs> well, even though your parents might be missing it, there's a lot of people out there that need to see this because I think it is a brilliant piece of filmmaking and it's a great okay. performance. You and Julia are fantastic. But um, thanks so much for your time today, Pete. It's been a pleasure speaking thanks, to you. Yeah, I really, the best, really best of luck with the release and stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys.